AMD did it. They decided it's go time. In fact, they exceeded my expectations in terms of pricing. However, they may have fallen short in terms of performance. How does this GPU really compare to the 4090 at 4K rasterization and in ray tracing? Let's get into it. AMD announced the RX 7900 GPUs and the price shown at the end of the show was a jaw dropper. However, now that the excitement has worn off, what can we really expect in terms of performance? The specs AMD gave are as follows. The RX 7900 XTX has 96 compute units. They didn't call out 12,000 shaders, they said 96 compute units. And that is the first red flag since that is only a 20% increase over the 6900 XT. They also showed a 2.3 GHz game clock. Well, the 6950 XT has a game clock of 2.1 GHz and the 6900 XT has a game clock of 2.015 GHz. So only a 9.5% increase over the 6950 and a 14% increase over the 6900. These GPUs are reportedly using PCIe 4.0 and not 5.0. So two red flags. It's only a 20% increase in shaders and a 9.5% increase in clock speed. Right at the outset, that's going to be a tough battle against the 4090, which increased its shaders by more than 50%, and it boosted clock speeds by 35% over the 3090 Ti. Now, Hardware Canucks reported that when they questioned AMD, the 7900 cards are not competing with the 4090. While they can match or beat the 4090 in a few AMD sponsor titles, that is not the card they are competing against. So while it is disappointing that it will not beat the 4090, it is $600 cheaper. So how close will it come to the 4090? Well, unlike two years ago where AMD provided 1440p and 4K charts for all three big Navi cards going up against Nvidia's RTX 3000 GPUs, this time we got nothing. Not one comparison to a 4090, not one comparison to a 3090 Ti, not one comparison to any Nvidia GPUs. And that is my third red flag. AMD did the complete opposite in what they did with the RX 6000 GPUs. If you are coming from a position of strength, then you have no issues with showing those comparisons. In their presentation, they obfuscated the data in ways that does not give you a clear indication of performance versus anything but the 6950, and even that is up to performance levels. But let's break down what they did show to find out what we can expect for performance. Let's start with the chart they showed with high refresh, 4K gaming with FSR. I took that chart to determine the frame rates without FSR in Hitman 2, Modern Warfare 2, and F122. I then went on to find the endnote to understand the settings they used. And there was no endnote. Not in the presentation or on their website. So let's move on to the next chart. High performance 4K ray tracing comparison between the 7900 XTX and the 6950 XT. This should be good. I again counted the pixels to determine the performance without FSR. In Cyberpunk, the 7900 provides a 75% native resolution improvement, and with FSR, it is 48%. In Dying Light 2, the 7900 doubled the native rasterization, and with FSR, it was an 85% improvement. In Hitman 3, the 7900 was a 73% improvement natively, and 56% with FSR. So in this three game average, native ray tracing rasterization improved 83% and with FSR, it improved 63%. As a sense check, I went to Tech Power Up. I love Tech Power Up. Lots and lots of data. And I looked at the Cyberpunk data and they showed the same 12 FPS for the 6950. So with the 7900 at 21 FPS, it will be at an RTX 3090 level for rasterization and far behind the 4090. But what else did AMD show? The up to 1.7 faster chart in 4K and 4K ray tracing when compared to the 6950 XT. I went to check the settings they use as listed in EndNote RX 822 and no settings were provided in that EndNote. Also, the games listed in that EndNote do not match the games listed in the slide. These slides are an absolute dumpster fire. These slides are nowhere near the quality of the slides they used in the RX 6000 GPU announcements. Why AMD? Why? Let's stick to the ray tracing performance and focus on the three games on the right. 
taking the data from Tech Power Up and using AMD's multiplier, in Resident Evil Village, the 7900 is 28% slower than the 4090. In Metro Exodus, the 7900 is 41% slower than the 4090. And in Doom Eternal, it is showing 7% faster than the 3090 Ti. I don't have the 4090 numbers. When checking at AMD's website for footnotes, I found this performance chart and they provided FPS numbers for two of the games we just saw, Resident Evil Village and Doom Eternal. I took the first three games and the last three games and compiled them into one chart showing all six games. In ray tracing performance, the 7900 is on average 70% faster than the 6900 and 68% faster than the 6950. So there is a substantial uplift in ray tracing performance over RDNA 2. But how does it compare to NVIDIA? Using the data from Tech Power Up, I charted the four games available for comparison, and you see that in Cyberpunk and Metro Exodus, the 7900 slightly trails the 3090 Ti. In Doom Eternal, it slightly leads the 3090 Ti, and in Resident Evil Village, the performance is between a 3090 Ti and 4090. So it appears the 7900 is more like a 3090 Ti or better in ray tracing. Now let's move on to 4K rasterization performance. In the 1.7 times faster chart, I took two of the games, Watch Dogs and Cyberpunk. In this chart from Hardware and Box for Watch Dogs Legion, I love these charts, the 6950 XT averages 88 FPS. Multiplying that by 1.5 and the 7900 would be at 132 FPS or just 9.4% short of the 4090. In Cyberpunk, the 6950 averages 49 FPS. So a 1.7 times increase for the 7900 shown in the table would provide 83 FPS and it would tie with the 4090. For more comparisons, using this performance chart from AMD's website, it showed the frame rates of four games at 4K max settings. And again, using the data from Hardware Unboxed and Tech Power Up, in Modern Warfare 2, the 7900 is tied with the 4090. In God of War, it is 25% slower, in Red Dead 2, it is 11% slower, and in Valhalla, it is 7% slower. Compiling these six games into one chart and comparing against the 6900 GPUs, we can see that the 7900 is 56% faster than the 6900 and is 44% faster than the 6950. These values are lower than the up to numbers as they are pulled down by Red Dead 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla with a 7900 is only 20 and 25% faster respectively. These are AMD's numbers for these two games. But how does it compare to the 4090? In the six games available, you can see that the 7900 is tied with the 4090 in Cyberpunk and Modern Warfare 2. It trails the 4090 by less than 10% in Watch Dogs, Red Dead 2, and Valhalla. Only in God of War is the 4090 faster by 33%. Taking the average, the 4090 is 9.6% faster than a 7900. That is a very good showing for a GPU that costs $600 less. By the way, if you like analysis videos like this, like, share, and consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments below if you think AMD priced these new GPUs just right. But I don't think it's going to end up being that close. Here's why. The previous chart showed the 7900 is 44% faster than a 6950. And we know that the 4090 is 65% faster than a 3090 Ti. So if there was a large 40 game benchmark, I would expect the 4090 to pull ahead by at least 20%. This just comes from experience and doing lots of analysis like this. The most recent example I can give is when AMD introduced the RX 6700 XT and they showed charts that would lead you to believe the performance is closer to a 3070. However, after Steve at Hub ran his 40 game benchmark, we saw it was closer to a 3060 Ti, just as I suspected. Even if I ignore all these charts and just focus on the performance per watt chart they showed, a 54% improvement over an RDNA 2. And that shows RDNA 2 is a 54% increase over RDNA 1. If you go back two years to AMD's presentation, When Gaming Begins, Episode 2, they showed the same 54% improvement for RDNA 2. However, that was for the 6800 XT. Lisa Su confirmed that when she showed a chart at the end of the presentation where the 6900 XT overachieved and was a 65% performance per watt improvement over RDNA 1. So what is the GPU used for the comparison? 
Let's check the endnotes. There is no endnote for RX-816. Dumpster fire. This presentation is a dumpster fire. Now if I use the performance per watt to calculate a Time Spy Extreme score, I get about 16,000. A 4090 just happens to be about 21% higher than that number. Since the 4080 is just under 14,000, that means the 7900 is about 15-20% to faster than the 4080 while being $200 cheaper. One thing you cannot deny is that AMD is providing better value. I showed in my previous video how NVIDIA is providing more performance with the RTX 40 GPUs. However, you have to pay for that generational performance improvement. The three RTX 30 GPUs are shown on the left and the RTX 40 GPUs are on the right. You can see that you do not get any more time spy points for your dollar. It's about the same as last gen. And if I add AMD GPUs in the 6000 series and the new 7900, you can see how the new 7900 makes a sizable jump in the number of time spy points for your dollar. That is a generational increase that Nvidia refuses to provide. Nvidia just wants you to pay for more performance. I am ecstatic that AMD chose to compete this generation and not just slot into Nvidia's pricing structure. Nvidia will be forced to reduce prices of the 4080 next year when they actually start supplying these GPUs in volume but I don't expect the price of the 4090 to come down anytime soon. What about the RX 7900 XT? AMD provided zero performance data for this GPU, so I will provide the same courtesy and provide zero analysis. This card at 899 makes no sense. This GPU would not be interesting unless it was priced at $749. Then I could get excited about this GPU. Until that happens, I'm going to ignore this GPU just like AMD did. I will be very interested on availability of any of these GPUs on launch day. And as the used GPU market begins to swell and with more and more GPUs available, it does make me wonder if getting a used GPU would provide even better value if you can get one for around half the price. This season is becoming a great season for building a PC again. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.